the shortcut of the imagination. Within the tenets of epigenetics, there is a theory that the cells of our body have structures on them that act like broadcast receivers existing to pick up a specific quantum broadcast of consciousness, you. This broadcast of you exists everywhere in the universe, so that when the cells and DNA of your body tune into it, you take on that body as an expression of your broadcast. Biologist Dr. Bruce Lipton has been a visible proponent of the epigenetics theory, and he has offered it up as proof that the essence of us, our soul, is immortal, and that at the moment of death, it's simply a matter of not being received by the body anymore, yet the broadcast continues as us. When you combine this theory with the theory of universal biocentrism, where it is postulated that the universe exists because of life, then you have the scientific equivalent of metaphysical spirituality. And I say, well, about time. These theories allow for a scientific basis for perennial spiritual teachings such as reincarnation and the immutability of the soul and gives me great hope for humanity. Lipton has also said that simply knowing these theories doesn't necessarily mean your life gets any better. He notes that although the cells of the body pick up the broadcast of you, there's a whole lot more to the story than just that momentary union. The conundrum of physical existence is that as a soul, we've been around literally forever. And the body game must be just that, a game. A game in which we find ourselves not only surrounded by the space-time reality of our perceptions as interpreted by a human body's brain and energy fields, but also existing outside that local space-time continuum as an infinite non-local presence. This awkward combination can cause a sort of schizo situation where we are perceiving being swept along in a vortex of experiences while at the same time are watching it from the outside. It seems at times like what we intend for our lives to be is the exact opposite of what we experience. Well, this predicament is now addressable in light of these new theories of consciousness. It is possible to perceive that what we intend to experience as a soul or outside observer in some ways imprints a reverse image on the movie screen of our experience, thus creating a game of creating the desired experience from the undesired situation. We experience poverty because the game is achieving wealth. We experience disease, sickness, and pain in order to achieve the opposite. It is a dualistic world in this way, and by acknowledging and allowing for this, there is a gigantic reason for hope, and a gigantic reason to play the game, because the ultimate objective is the utopian visions we all have of what our lives could be, that positive print of the negative image we may be experiencing. In other words, what we truly, deeply desire for our lives is inevitable. I'm humorously reminded of the Seinfeld TV series episode where the characters all experience the opposite world. <laughs> where success is achieved by doing the opposite of what seems logical or reasonable. And, in a very real sense, this is precisely the ultimate shortcut to the realization of our greatest desires and highest intentions. Reach beyond the automatic, habitual way of seeing the world. Do what's not expected. What's irrational or impractical, as that is closer to achieving the freedom we strive for? Our ego has a powerful weapon, the mind, conscious and subconscious. That combination of the ego and the mind sets up a powerful adversary in the playing of the incarnation game. The automatic tendency is to react and take personally our experiences of what is not wanted. We end up just putting our heads down with our noses to the grindstone of what has worked in the past when that is just the old, long way around. And most of us take up an entire lifetime never getting to what it was we originally intended for our experience. The hack, or shortcut, is right there as part of the original equipment we all came in with, the imagination. The imagination is the creative force that determines all of our experience. By directing the imagination to create the feelings of what we desire in the body, 
Then with repetition, the body's cells begin resonating with those feelings and create an attractive force that organizes the quantum field around our experience, bringing us precisely what we desire. This is a mechanical property of physical existence, not some wishful thinking or woo-woo speculation. Where we get tripped up is when we interpret subsequent experiences that don't fit our desires as, quote, evidence that our desires are not being fulfilled or are being blocked or neutralized in some way. This is far from the truth, as just the opposite is actually true. After expressing a desire, the quantum field begins to respond and everything that happens is what is required to happen to bring about the ultimate actualization of our intention. The key is to interpret every setback or every non-related event or outside phenomenon as evidence of the unfoldment of our intention, regardless of its initial appearance. So, jump on board with yourself. Feel and live life as if it is as you want it to be. Enjoy the enfoldment of it, and soon, inevitably, it will come to pass. You have been listening to This Quantum Life by Boyd Martin. Brought to you by the Quantum Health Newsletter from Pure Energy Rx. www.pureenergyrx.com.